Hello everyone, MechFrog here. Today we're going to take another look at my somewhat successful series of Hextech bases. I created them for the Battlemech models and I have some circular ones for other game systems as well, but I think it's important that we consistently try to improve on the things that we do, so I've decided to invest some time into becoming more proficient at using Blender for 3D modeling. My goal was to update these hex bases to include a more natural looking texture in order to take advantage of speed paints, contrast paints, and dipping inks that can settle down into the nooks and crannies of the model. I've accomplished this by grabbing portions of the models I wanted to edit, subdividing them to give the program lots of polygons and vertices to play with, and once I switched over to sculpting mode, I could start messing with it. Once there, I could use the sculpting tools to pull up the areas to create a more randomized ground for the tops of each hex plane. Once they looked good, it was a matter of exporting them as STL files and getting the bases into the slicer for testing. Someone in a previous video's comments asked about orientation of the bases for printing, so I made sure to include that in the video here. I tend to print them at a very steep angle. This buys some space on the print plate and has proved to limit the number of failures I've experienced at lower angles. The auto supports are also almost always lacking, so I go in and make sure that the parts of the model that are built first have some extra supports, as well as any bits that overhang as represented by the darker reds in the support section of the slicer. I probably overdo it a bit with the supports, but I'd rather use a little tiny bit more resin than have to spend 20 minutes cleaning out the resin tank when a print fails. Thankfully, pulling them off the printer showed successful prints. Now it's just a matter of cleaning them up and hitting them with some UV light so they can be painted. At first glance, the textured areas look good, but we won't really know for sure until we test out some paints. As usual, the resin will need to be primed. For these bases, I went with a white, since I'm going to be using contrasts, speed paints, and dipping inks for the test. I've also used other primers for more standard base coat and wash process, and that works great too. Once the base coat's dry, we can start to test out the paints. I'm curious to see how they'll do with these uneven tops of the hexes. Let's find out. For the bases with water elements, I've painted them a shade of blue, let it dry and then filled it in with an anthematic blue contrast paint to help push the water effect. On top of that, clear UV resin completes it and adds a little bit of razzle dazzle to the bases. As you can see, the bumpy effect from the bases is more pronounced with some colors than with others. It really depends on what you're looking for with your models and how you want to accentuate them. I'm really fond of the dark red Army Painter Speed Paint base, as well as the darker green ones. Uh, one of those is actually the standard for which I'm going to be using uh, my, for my Steel Falcon Galaxy moving forward. If you are interested in these bases or the originals, the, the STL files are going to be available for my Coast Fi supporters this week and moving forward. I still have the original 1.0 bases available on my mini factory, and that link can be found in the video details below. If you do end up using the files, I would love to see the final result. You can message me at MechFrog12 on Twitter or Instagram as MechanicalFrog or on our own Discord channel. Thanks as always to the Ko-Fi supporters for keeping the resin flowing. If you want to support the channel, the link is in the description below. Likes and subscribes help me fight my always present seed of doubt, so thanks if you throw one my way. Take care, be awesome, and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.